Hi everyone, hope all of you are doing well in this particular context on Summit. I'm Victor Couturier and I work as a cloud engineer at Société Générale, one of the oldest and biggest bank in France. And I am here in our new campus in Paris to share with you our journey in OpenStack contribution and how does contributing to open source truly increase the delivery of our team. So to begin with a little bit of context, I am part of the cloud team of Société Générale, which is composed of about uh, 10 DevOps. And this, the purpose of the team is to expose cloud services to customers. And these customers are mainly developers of the bank who want to host their own application. So that's all about private cloud. And this team, six years ago, originally used the VMware stack to propose their services. So it's all about ESXi and VRealize suite. So it is about 40,000 VMs who are running today uh, in this environment. But in the past three years, with the growing of the need of infrastructure to host cloud native application, we launched a new OpenStack based offer, which power, I think, around 5,000 VMs today. And it is growing. Um, so when, as the context is, is done, let's begin with presentation with a little story. So go back in 2019, where our OpenStack deployment comes only one availability zone in one data center in Paris region. Uh, it is based on Ceph, so the storage is a Ceph cluster for both image and VM. And we just receive our new servers to open a second availability zone in Paris region in a second data center. And all users were very excited by this new availability zone. But there is one last thing to fix, I think, uh, to open this availability zone. Because um, to ensure a good storage performance to customer VMs, we really need to have a local safe cluster in per data center because nobody wants its VM run half on a local data center and half on another data center. So we need two safe cluster. And in order to guarantee this blazing fast provisioning customer love with OpenStack and Ceph, this famous copy and write, we also need the glance image to be present on local self cluster. So in our case, the glance image should be deployed on the two storage cluster. And at this time, uh, it was the first version glance support the multi-store. And multi-store in glance at this time was at the very beginning. So you were able to configure multiple store but you need to choose only one to send your image. So you weren't able to choose multiple stores to send your image. So we have an issue that side, and in order to fix it, we thought about three solutions to deliver finally this second availability zone. So the first solution is to build custom code around the project. So here it is OpenStack Lens actually. And it is actually the standard way of doing because when you are using, by example, proprietary software, you don't have access to the code. So it is mandatory to develop code around the proprietary software and you don't have the choice, in fact. The second solution is to modify the code of the project, but without releasing it and submitting it to the community. So it is kind of forking. And the third solution is to do the same, but instead of totally forking, submit the code to the community and try to get it merged. So the first solution, I think, is the most acceptable to implement your business specific logic. By example, in our case, it is um, inserting OpenStack VM into our CMDB or enforcing security group infrastructure rules, uh, so business rules, uh, against our security groups. So that's very convenient, but it will require you, it will require you the biggest amount of work because you will need to develop everything. It is your code, you will need to maintain it forever and you will be forever alone to do it. 
the second solution is always the worst the, the worst case actually because you even if it is easier to develop custom code inside the project it will be really a pain to upgrade and it will be so painful that each upgrade you will pay pay 10 times uh, the initial investment so it is a very bad idea to do that to do that and the third solution is I think you will love it because it is the last one and it is the one we implemented at Societe Generale is to actually modify the project, so modify OpenStack in our case and submitting it to the community. And at the end, in the long term, it is a solution it will require the less workload because part of the code you will develop will be supported by the community forever and you will be able to leverage on all the code existing in the project. So that's one of the best solutions we found and it will also develop a lot of soft skills like by example a better appropriation of your everyday tools um, or maybe um, you will get a lot of improvement in your development skills because you will uh, develop against uh, experimented developers and obviously you will desacralize the open source contribution process. So to emphasize this, let's take a very short example about one of the first contributions we've made, and it was in it. So it is a infrastructure as code tool of OpenStack for deploying cloud resources, and internally we are using it basically only for deploying base block of the cloud, so flavors, domain, um, external network, and all that kind of stuff. And in fact, uh, it is very convenient because it is just plain YAML and you just have to uh, store your YAML in Git then regularly apply your Git configuration to ensure everything is properly set up in all your environment and all your region. So it's very convenient to use it for that. But uh, by example, you, here is an example of uh, it template for networks. So it is plain YAML, it is quite simple. You just describe all your resources in this list and each resource is described by a list of properties which describe the resources. So it's kind of simple to store and to write, but the problem is we are relying on the tags attribute in the Neutron network in order to know to which project we will need to share which external network. So we are putting some tags on the project, tags on the network, then we will share the project to the right network, the network to the right project, sorry. So it is very convenient to do that, but in fact, the tags attribute, despite it is available in Neutron, it is not exposed through it. So it means you can't use the tags attribute as a property of your YAML. It's not allowed, mainly because the it resources wasn't updated when the Neutron network uh, implement the tags uh, framework. So our solution was to look into GitHub, into the it source code and find, find if we can understand it or maybe add a feature. And here is what we found. So here is the file we modify. So it is a provider net class in a provider net.py file. Until here, everything is fine. And as you can see, there is only a list of properties, which is uh, all the allowed properties in the ETML mapped to the related attribute in Neutron API. So it's quite simple. And later, you will find a detailed list of the properties. So as you can see, there is no presence of the tags attribute. So we can't specify tags. So we try to add tags in that list and try if it works. So here is the commit we've made, not much line of code, as you can see, it is only about adding tags to the list, then described it in the detailed description of the attribute. And we tried that. And guess what? It worked. It worked. So in only a couple of lines of codes, we save ourselves a huge amount of custom development to handle tags outside of our it stack. 
because here it is only 10 lines of code and it's done. We can just use our tags in our it stack. And we have plenty of examples like this. Each time, we choose to enhance a bit more the product rather than having to deal with the problem and spend a lot of time to find a workaround. And especially with these commits, in less than one afternoon, the code was pushed upstream and deployed in production in our environment. Because you can still push your modification into your production, at the same time it is under review by the community. It's not a problem. And in the same afternoon, we develop that code, push it to production, declare and report the bug in Storyboard, the issue tracker of it, and onboard the people in the team on the contribution process. And guess what? One week later only, it was merged and ready to ship in the next OpenStack version. So that's a very short example of a quick contribution we saved, which saved us a lot of time. And for example, here I have the screenshot of a commit idea I had by preparing this presentation for the summit. So it shows the complexity of these things. It is clearly bugs we just found and we just fix, like any other bugs we can find in your own internal repository actually. So now let's talk about how we implement that in the cloud team. Because as I said in the beginning, we don't want to add extra workload to the team because we have already so much things to do, especially the DevOps of the team. So we don't want to add extra workload for the contribution. So we thought about a simple workflow to truly integrate the contribution process into our everyday work. And to begin, we are working in Agile with a, a Scrum methodology. So like always in Agile, everything begins with a grooming and a sprint planning. And here our product owner, hello product owner, he will submit us a new task. So we will look at the task and we will ask ourselves a first question. Does it exist in the product? And if the answer is yes, okay, go ahead, we will just use the feature in the product and we will perform the task. And if the answer is no, we will ask us a second question, does it make sense to add it? So will OpenStack be better if we add this feature we need? And if the answer is yes, we will transform the task to a contribution task. And in fact, in terms of Agile, it is just a task, so it's changed nothing. But the point is, we will not develop two times the code. So not once for the Societe Generale, then transform it to a contribution upstream. So in fact, we will just deploy, develop one time the code and at the end of the task, submitting it to the community and use it internally in our production. But it doesn't matter, it is under review by the community. So we will develop only once the, the code. And another thing is, if the answer is no to this question, so it does not make sense to add it to the product, we will ask ourselves, why do we need so? It is a good way to step back and to think about why do we need this feature which is not better for the product. So maybe it's a good time to rework it and to thought about how we can fit more easily into the project. So with that workflow, we truly integrate the contribution process without actual workload and we are able to industrialize the process of contributing to open source into our everyday work of the team. And now let's go to what have been achieved today with that workflow. So first, we have two features developed in Glance. The first one, the multi-store import, I have talked about it earlier in the presentation, was released in Usury. So from Usury, you are able to deploy an image to multiple stores. And the second feature, which we'll release in Victoria, is the scene provisioning capacity of Glance. So it will reduce significantly the time of the upload of the image, then the space they will use into, the, into your backend. So that's the two main features we developed for clients. And we also developed a new API micro version for Nova, which is just about listing stuff, but it is always cool to say that 
you, uh, you have developed an API micro version on Nova. Um, then, in addition to that, we just developed 26 commits, which are already merged in the community um, in various projects like Cilometer, Cola, Cola Ansible. Um, I think there is some Keystone too. So, various projects, and in addition to Glance and Nova, obviously. And these 26 commits bring us to nearly 4,000 lines of codes contributed by Societe Generale in the OpenStack community. And it put us at the second place in terms of financial company uh, who contribute to OpenStack. So just behind China in Unpay, and I hear that these guys have a lot of OpenStack deployment and quite big, so congratulations, guys. <laughs> but uh, yes, we, we, we are proud of this 4,000 line of codes too. Uh, contributed to the community, and you can consult this uh, KPI in Stackalytics in real time. Everything is extracted from Stackalytics. And now, um, let's go to some takeaways of this presentation on what uh, we learned with contribution to an open source project, not only OpenStack, it's applicable for everything, I think. We also contribute in Grafana, or Prometheus. So the first takeaway will be, do not try to change the world. So you don't have to seek the thing to contribute or willing to do something important. The point is, is we are talking about collaborative development. So each thing is important. If you notice something to improve, it is time saved for the next people who will contribute another stuff. Sorry. And that is collaborative development. Every commit matters. The second takeaway will be to respect the product goal on its roadmap. So if you, you need to look, uh, look at it with a neutral eye. So take a step back and do not think specific, but standardize your way of thinking. And when you are working in OpenStack community to publish some code, you are not working for your company anymore. You are working to enhance OpenStack. So you need to take a step back and to think specific, and it is uh, to, to think uh, standardized, sorry. And it is very important when you build system, we need to go at scale. So that, that's a good point, actually. And the third one, the third one is my favorite by far, is you will gain a lot of kindness in other people's code. And as we appropriate it, we are no longer in a customer-vendor relationship where we will blame the product for not working properly and we will waste less time correcting the problem, the problem directly than complaining that it isn't working. And I think that's a very good point because you will gain a lot of kindness and we, you will enhance a lot your development skill with that. Okay, guys, so I... Uh, I hope you find this feedback interesting and if you have any question, let's answer it live. Bye.